Hi and welcome to my electronics channel. In this video I'll show you how I set up a new PIC project with a timer interrupt. We'll use a one millisecond and a one second timer interrupt and this is a very easy way to set it up. I'll be using the MCC configurator and we'll need just two lines of code. This is what you'll need if you want to follow along. Um, PC with MPLabX installed and the XC8 compiler. I'm using version 1.45 here. Um, also the MCC code configurator needs to be installed. PIC programmer, PIC kit 3 will do fine or PIC kit 4. A PIC 16F 1613 is what I've used but any other 16F series PIC should work just as well. Breadboard and 5 volt power supply um, and two LEDs and two 220 ohm resistors. This is how I've wired it up just power and ground onto the chip and then the PIC kit requires three extra connections the VPP, the clock and data 12 and 13 and then I've got my two LEDs on here one's on pin 11 which is the port RA2 and one's on pin 8 which is the port RC2 now that's done let's get started with the MP lab stuff so the first thing we need to do is start a new project standalone project and uh, follow the wizard steps fairly straightforward put our pick number in that we're using pick 16 F 1613 we can skip a couple of these steps here select the compiler and give a name to the project so this is going to be timer interrupt and uh, finish and that's the project is set up and now we're ready to open the MCC the configurator um, and start setting the chip up and this is where it's so easy with the MCC um, as you'll see it's, gra it's all graphical uh, ticking boxes and the like um, so there's no need to dig into the, the complexities of the configuration registers in the manual the first time you open the configurator in a project it will come up with this content manager wizard um, window um, so in this case we just need to select MCC classic then we just click finish and let it do its stuff it just takes a few seconds and then it will should present us with the uh, configurator window when the configurator window appears click on system module to begin with and this allows us to set up the oscillator so we'll select internal oscillator and we'll select 4 megahertz uncheck low voltage programming and then click on the pin module and now we can choose our um, pins we'll choose which pins that we want to be outputs port A2 is going to be our one of our LED outputs and C2 is the other LED output select those uncheck the analog because we don't want them to be analogs and that's uh, that's that done that, so the next step is to generate the uh, um, configuration file check that it says generation complete at the bottom and as long as it has you can dismiss the um, uh, configurator window and now we should see that we've got all the configurator generated files now um, in the project including a main.c at that point we're ready to start programming so now we're ready to start programming we can uh, open our main.c that it generated for us and that has nothing in it um, at the moment just initialization um, and a space to put our main code so i always like to start with a blinking LED it's always reassuring to see that so if we do that so I, what I'll do first is I'll um, define our LED so I shall make this one the green green LED the green LED which is on pin 8 which is port C bit 2 but we want to refer to the output latches so we refer to latc bits and then select bit 2 if we can take that down into our main program and we can say green LED exclusive or that with 
one. So that's a kind of shortcut for green LED equal to whatever it is now, exclusive ord with one. And exclusive oring a bit with one uh, will invert the bit. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to, in, each time it executes that line, uh, it's going to make the LED the opposite to whatever it is. So it's going to make it blink, but it's going to be fast. So what we really need to do in, under, in here is put a delay in here. And put a delay in milliseconds. 500 milliseconds, half a second. Okay, let's program this into the device and see what happens. Click the down arrow button. Okay, so I need to tell it what programmer to use. So there's my picket three, so I'll select that one. Okay. Check that the device is the correct part. Yes, it is. 16F1613. Okay, that. And we see programming and verify complete. And uh, we see uh, also we can see our uh, green LED has started flashing. So that worked. Now I'm happy the processor is running and uh, accepting the code. And the next thing to do is to set up the timer interrupt. So I open the configurator, and this takes uh, sometimes a few seconds. Okay, so it's now open. So if we look on um, this window on the, on the left hand side, the device resources, and um, we scroll down a little bit and should near the bottom, we should find timer. Uh, if we expand that there, we have an option. We have several hardware timers uh, in this device um, and we can add those, one or all of them. Um, to the to the configuration of this device and so uh, I only need one for this so I'll just pick timer zero click the plus and that now adds that we see it at the top now um, uh, as a resource on this device and in the um, center window we can see how we set up this device uh, just by selecting the options we want um, so if we look first of all at the clock source, we, we want to um, clock this timer um, we, uh, with uh, some available clock source. Now we don't we don't want to use that clock input. Uh, what we want to use in this case is the our oscillator divided by four. So we select that, and then what we want to get on the right hand side here, we we want a one millisecond um, interrupt period. So if we, if we look at this um, box here, it tells us the range we've got here. We've got between 1 microsecond and 256 microseconds. So that, that is not a wide enough range. We, so we need what we need to do here um, is we need to enable the prescaler. Okay, that's done it. That's changed. We can see it's changed. This now has gone up to, um, well, that's probably fine as it is. It's now up to 65 milliseconds. So we put in here just the number that we want, which we want one millisecond. So we put one millisecond in um, and we see the actual time that it's gonna, the closest it can get is 1.024. So we can actually improve on that a little bit by adjusting this um, prescaler here. So it doesn't need to be such a big divide. I think if we use a, a smaller divide, let's try one to four. Yeah, one to four uh, will give us a range of up to one 0.024 milliseconds we only need one millisecond so that's fine and it's actually getting it more accurate for us um, pretty close to one millisecond so this is subject of course to the um, actual clock accuracy which in this case we're using the RC uh, internal oscillator which is not that accurate um, but it's not bad so it's going to be fairly close to one millisecond so what we also need to do is we need to enable this timer interrupt option here 
Um, and we have a second ability now down here through software which will be automatically generated uh, we have the ability to do a further divide down of this one millisecond so we can put a number in here that we want to divide that by and if we put a thousand in there enter um, that now gives us a while one millisecond divided by a thousand which of course is one second so that will now give us a callback function uh, which will be called once a second which can be quite useful and that's all we need to do to set up this this timer um, and, and after that we just click on the generate button um, and that will generate the code and we check at the bottom that it says complete generation complete and it does so we can dismiss this um, configurator window now go back to our project and if we look look in our generated files here we now should see we have one for timer zero so we can double click that to open it up and scroll down we we'll keep scrolling down it's good this is all the code that it's generated to, to do the interrupt and we don't have to be too concerned about what that is it's uh, it does it for us but when I'm going down here and I'm looking for where it says um, there's a section to to enter user code so we have one here add your custom callback code here so that that is the callback which is our one second uh, and just here I missed it is our timer zero interrupt code so this is our one millisecond timer and so we put any any code that we want to to operate every mil one millisecond we put it in here and every and any code we want to operate every one second we we put it in here next I need to add the LED definition for the orange LED top of this section in here um, just below these includes we're going to put a hash define I don't know if I remember correctly, it's on lat a bit two. So I select now lat a bit two. Now should I just copy that? So now if I now go back down to my callback here, let me put that in correctly this time. Orange LED exclusive all with one so that should be blinking our orange LED and should be on for a second off for a second um, continuously so let's build that compile that make sure it works yeah that's fine okay so let's program that now and uh, see what happens programming complete. At this point I'm expecting the orange LED to start blinking and it didn't work. But I have a, just realized I think I know what I have done wrong. Let me go into main. Yes this is what I've done wrong. I didn't enable the interrupts. Uh, easy mistake. Um, so we must enable our global interrupt which is just a matter of uncommenting the code it puts it out for us uh, it just uh, I've just needed to enable it and then I also need to enable the peripheral interrupt I think let me try that I'm going to try that without build and program it again So yeah, that's correct. There's no need to enable the um, the peripheral interrupt separately. It's just the global interrupt is enough. So we can now see that that is flashing at a at a different rate to the other one, as that is now controlled by the interrupt. So if we wanted to check that timing-wise, it would be useful. And this is this is usually what I do is I check this with the scope. 
uh, to make sure that it um, it is really working. So let me do that right now. So that is to check the timing, of course, rather than, I mean, it's working, but um, we, we want to check the timing here. So I've stopped that. Um, we can now measure the time. So there's our time, 1.02 seconds. So I'd say that's pretty good. Again, that inaccuracy is, is because we're using the RC oscillator. If you wanted it to be a more accurate timing, um, you could use a crystal, of course. So let's look at the one millisecond interrupt as well, then, so we can see that working. So all we need to do to try the one millisecond is we just locate our linking code, which is in our one millisecond callback um, function. And so all we need to do is remove that from there and put it into our time zero interrupt main um, part of the code, which is the one millisecond part of the code. So I'll just put it in there and um, program the device again, and that should change that over to be a one millisecond. And that's that's done. That's programmed, and and we can see that um, that LED doesn't look like it's blinking anymore. But that is to be expected because it's going a bit fast now. We can't see it. So if we look on the scope, we see that uh, it it is blinking. And if we just increase this time base a little bit so that we can actually see, let's go a bit more. One more, and in fact. It's landed right, right on our, our marker at, in fact, exactly um, 1.02 milliseconds, which is exactly a thousand um, times faster than the uh, one second um, uh, interrupt blink um, worked out at. So I would say that is working perfectly well. I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions, please post them below in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Also, please like and subscribe if you can. Thanks for watching.